Hi everyone and welcome to Bassman Studio. In this new episode of Bassman Studio, I'm going to be copying uh, what is perhaps the most famous painting in the world, the Mona Lisa. So the challenge is that I'm going to paint it in 15 minutes. So if you follow step by step what I'm doing, um, I offer you the challenge as well. It's a lot of fun and uh, teaches you a lot. So um, if anyone knows the history of the Mona Lisa, it was painted in the 16th century by Leonardo da Vinci, who's one of the most famous artists of all time. So it hangs now in the Louvre Museum in Paris. So um, sit back and relax. And let's start this new video from Bassman Studio. So here I have all my equipment laid out, my brushes, as well as my palette where I pre-mix some of the colors because since I'm doing this kind of like in 15 minutes, um, it's good to pre-mix colors so you don't have to spend time mixing. Of course, I'll have to mix more colors later on, but these are the main colors that I'll be using. And I've already, as you can see, drawn out the underpainting in burnt sienna. So I've established uh, the composition, the lights and darks, very simply in burnt sienna. Let it dry for a little while. And now I'm adding the background. I'm starting with the sky, which is a, of a greenish yellow color. Now, originally the Mona Lisa sky was blue, but because of age, of course, it's darkened to this greenish yellow color. So you could imagine like a beautiful blue sky instead of like this greenish yellow sky that we see now. And you can see I'm just establishing the light, the very basic lights and darks right now. As usual, as you could see from uh, previous videos, this is how we start a painting. We will be called blocking in. We just put in the main areas of light and dark in broad areas. Uh, and we don't worry about detail. But some of my underpainting, of course, I'm painting over, but I'm keeping the main areas, as you can see, of light and dark, so uh, as a guide for myself. And as a good foundation. So what I'm putting in is what we call the middle tone. So it's not the lightest light, not the darkest dark. It's just a middle tone of the painting. And just going around. And because this is uh, done in 15 minutes, I'm speeding up the process. And now I'm adding a bit of the greenish color in the background, in the, mount in the uh, mountainous area of the Mona Lisa. And it's good. As you can see, I'm using a really big brush. So if you could find a really big flat brush, just so do all the blocking in, that's, that'd be great. It's good to get a really strong flat brush, one that can hold a lot of paint. Um, you could buy bristle. Bristle brushes are very good for holding oil paint. And now I'm adding a pretty dark black, which I mixed with a little bit of yellow. Not too much yellow, but just a little bit of yellow. Because the entire painting is pretty much like a tone of yellow, because again, because of its age. So, just in big broad areas as you can see. No detail yet. I haven't even put in the shadows yet really, this is just like the big broad areas. And just putting in like the basic dark shapes. And later on I could soften it, but right now my only intention is to cover as much space as possible, as quickly as possible. And just putting in Mona Lisa's hair. So for a little practice you could um, use this big brush to Kind of go in these little delicate areas as I'm doing. It takes a little bit of practice, but like anything, you do it for a while and you just get better at it. it becomes more natural. 
But it's always good to practice with little oil studies like this. It teaches you a lot. It teaches you to think quickly. And now I'm just adding some of the dark shadows in the background. Again, not worrying too much about detail. And you can see I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the brush. It's just pretty much like very delicately going around. And just adding a little bit of detail on her hands, etc. and her sleeve. Now if a really a little smaller brush I could put in like uh, some of the smaller shadows, like underneath her eyes, her nose. And it can even soften the shadows on her cheek. And under her chin. Because, of course, the Mona Lisa has some beautiful, soft um, shadows called uh, sfumato. Is the word used in the Renaissance, like a very soft shadow. Smoky shadow is what that translates into. So everything is blended very, very soft. And there are not really many hard lines on the painting. It's very, very much a soft, smoky painting, basically. So just adding in some of the parts of the sleeve. And now I could go back and I could soften more shadows. Put in some of the shadows on her sleeve. Because this brush is a little smaller. I could start adding smaller details. So again, as you can see, I started large and then working my way to smaller details, such as the background. The key is to cover as much area as possible in as little, little time as possible in this case. And just adding the winding road in the back of the Mona Lisa. It's kind of an enig enigmatic background. And just a little bit of detail, just to indicate where her eyes would be. And you can see it's starting to come together slowly. And you could even, the great thing about oil is that it remains wet for such a long time, you just could manipulate it and you could mold it and fix it while it's still wet. So you can see I'm just molding it to fix the contours of her cheek and parts of her hair to give it a more of a sharp, sharp outline in the background. <clears throat> just, just by applying less pressure on the brush, you can get a sharper outline. And I could even soften a few shadows if I want to. Now the key is to know when to stop. That's practice. And again, you, you can see I'm just going around. I'm not focused on one area. I'm going everywhere. And I'm just putting details of her, her dress. And just putting some of the light parts of her dress. And you can see it's coming together. It's almost blocked in. Pretty much all the middle tones are put in there already. The shadows are put in. So once that's established, I could start going in and putting in even the smaller details of the painting. But first, I have to be satisfied that everything is there correctly. 
so you don't want to hurry. Although this is a 15 minute painting, I'm still being very careful like where things are placed, make sure they're correct, etc. And just going in and softening. And you can see I'm darkening the bottom part because in the original painting, the bottom of the Mona Lisa is pretty dark. Again, because of age, it has darkened. Um, so her, the bottom part of the Mona Lisa of, of, of her has almost blended in with the background. Um, these things happen with oil painting. They, the painting is over 500 years old and colors darken and varnishes also yellow the painting. So now I could go in with a very, very small brush and put in that famous Mona Lisa smile. And it's good to have a really sharp round brush like this to do like these small um, details. And I could even put in the shadow underneath her, her lip and use the same brush for any other small detail, such as her nose or the side of her nose to put in like the shadow. And I can even use this brush to soften the side of her face. So again, good brushes are very important. So get yourself some nice, strong, round and flat brushes. And I could use it to put in any small detail I want to. And now I could go back with that same some a semi larger flat brush and soften in areas of her face just to give it that smoky feeling that the Mona Lisa has. So as I said, oil paint, um, one of the benefits is that it remains wet for a very long time. So you could still manipulate the paint as it's still wet and move it around basically. And you can see after I put in all the middle tone and the softness, I could go back and soften it even more. Till I get it to the point where I want it, where I'm satisfied. And just going around. Now the original Mona Lisa took five years to complete apparently. So you could imagine I'm doing this in 15 minutes. So quite differently than Leonardo. Now I could use the same brush and you can see I'm just blending in and fixing the background. The backgrounds are very important because they pull the subject matter forward. So it's very important to get the background correct. And I mix this beautiful buttery yellow, and I'm just blending it in. And fixing the contours of her head. Again, since oil paint remains wet for a long time, I could still manipulate the paint and fix anything I need to be fixing at the point, at this point. And use the same color to fix anything in the background as well. Now I could go back and I could use a darker color to, again, fix anything I need to be fixed. Sometimes things need to be darkened as well. So you could use this to, uh, this opportunity to darken anything that needs to be darkened to pull things out and to pull things back if you need to. And just go around and be pretty critical of what you painted and see what needs to be corrected. Make sure the proportions are correct, the values are correct, 
the tone is correct. What I mean is the darks and lights. Make sure all the darks and lights are correct. That it has volume, meaning that it, it turns, it has a three-dimensional quality to it. And you can see I'm darkening the uh, parts of her dress and softening the shadows as well. So you just want to go around anything that you think needs to be put in, you put in. And now I'm putting in this beautiful um, reflected light, which is right under her chin, just to give it a bit of volume. And I'm softening it just a little bit. Just by the pressure I'm putting with the brush, you can just soften. There are also very good blending brushes you can get, like sable brushes. They're a little expensive, but they're great for blending. But I'm just using a regular bristle brush just to blend. And now I can just put in, with the same brush, I could put in any um, the lightest lights, like the light on her nose. With a beautiful, like, buttery, thick yellow. And here's where you could use a bit more impasto. Now I could go back and fix her lips with a small brush. So here's the opportunity where you could fix anything that needs to be fixed. Anything you might have missed, you could put in now, such as her eyes, any details on her nose, etc. So just putting in her eyes. A very small round brush. And one of the last things is just to fix the background. So again, you just want to go around and you just want to see what you might have missed. And just put in any small details that you might have overlooked, which is what I'm doing right now. Anything, I'm looking around for any white parts of the board that I might not have painted yet. I just want to cover all that up. And just a little blending as well, just at the end. And just covering up as much as I can and adding just a little bit of red in the background. There is a little red in the background. And here we have it, our finished copy of the Mona Lisa done in 15 minutes. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video from Bassman Studio and I hope you try uh, the painting challenge. And remember, um, for those who have subscribed, thank you very, very much. For those who haven't, please subscribe to my channel to see new videos coming soon. Um, again, any questions or comments you may have, please leave them in the comment section. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Um, and as always, go out there, do great work, don't be afraid to be creative, and I'll see you next time on Bassman Studio. Have an amazing and creative day, everyone.